And here is the Writer's Almanac for Saturday, the 8th of August, 2020. It's the birthday of the physicist Ernest O. Lawrence, born in Canton, South Dakota, 1901. As a little boy, he tried to figure out how matches worked, and he ended up lighting his clothes on fire. He built gliders. He built a radio transmitting station, worked his way through college, University of South Dakota, University of Minnesota, went to Yale, accepted a position at the University of California, Berkeley, where he put in 70-hour weeks at the Berkeley Radiation Lab and invented a machine, the cyclotron, to accelerate particles and hurl them at atoms to smash the atoms open, allowing scientists to discover radioactive isotopes of elements and sometimes new elements. 1899, on this date, the first refrigerator was patented. Before that, people used ice boxes, little wooden box lined with tin, insulated with cork or sawdust. But Albert T. Marshall came along and got a patent from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. And in 1918, the Frigidaire Company was founded to manufacture home refrigerators. The market grew in the 20s and 30s, and then by the end of World War II, no modern kitchen was without one. It's the birthday of the novelist Valerie Sayers, born in Beaufort, South Carolina, 1952, best known for her novel The Powers, about Joe DiMaggio as he sets out on his historic hitting streak in 1941. She grew up in South Carolina, but her father was a Yankees fan. Valerie Sayers' advice to young writers is, have some fun, what the hell. It's the birthday of Sarah Teasdale, 1884, St. Louis, Missouri. She moved to Chicago. She fell in with the poetry magazine crowd, Harriet Monroe and Vachel Lindsay, who was in love with her. She was famous for her simple love poems, but she didn't want to marry Vachel Lindsay. She married a businessman from St. Louis. They lived in New York City, unhappy marriage. She divorced him, lived alone for the rest of her life in an apartment just two blocks from the one where she'd lived on Central Park West. And it's the birthday of Marjorie Kinnon Rawlings, Washington, D.C., 1896, lived in Cross Creek, Florida, where she wrote her best-known book, The Yearling, which was the best-selling book of 1938, the story of Jody Baxter, a farm boy, and his adopted deer, recognized now as a young adult novel, but popular at the time among a general audience. 1885, on this day in New York City, the funeral of Ulysses S. Grant was held. Bells were tolling. One and a half million people stood in line along the route of the funeral procession. And 12 years later, he was buried in Grant's tomb, the largest tomb in North America. Here's a poem for today by Richard Jones, The Impossible. For my nephew, 1978 to 1984. We could be together now, years later, sitting on my tattered sofa, you with your root beer, me with my bourbon, watching TV as I explain the beautiful art of baseball. Bottom of the 11th, the Cubs came back with three in the ninth to tie, and now the impossible happens. A rookie, just up from the minors, pinch hits and wins the game. I am trying to tell the significance of this. You snuggle under my arm and listen, looking first at me, then at the television. But you are still young and don't understand, though you know enough of love to look at me and tell me that you do. The Impossible by Richard Jones from The Blessing. That's the Writer's Almanac for Saturday, August the 8th, funded by donations from listeners like you, and it's available on PRX. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.